Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Andrew Krause. I co-founded InventRight with Stephen Key over 20 years ago. We're the two guys over there on the left. And we've been coaching and mentoring inventors for the last 20, almost 21 years now. And we've been doing that for a long, long time. We've had students in over 65 countries. I'm very proud of that. And we're especially proud of these free webinars that we've been bringing to the public. We just all, all sorts of different exciting speakers with all sorts of different backgrounds and stories. And Stephen, today there's a gentleman that we've known for, for quite some time, Ryford. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, thank, thank you, Andrew. Um, we're really lucky to have a, Ryford on tonight because he's a really special entrepreneur. And I've got to know him um, through our coaching program, but more than that, he's a good friend. The, the thing that I walked away, and I'm even, I was, I think I've learned something from Reifer too. He values education, Andrew. And he values it so much that he invests in himself and he's willing to invest in himself from books to going to events. He surrounds himself with people that can help his business grow. And that's just smart. Um, and I've noticed that because he does so many different things. He stays connected. He asks some really good questions and he's always moving forward. So Ryford, thank you for, for coming on tonight. Hey guys. Well, thank you for having me here. Um, you know, very exciting to share my story with your audience and hopefully, um, you know, they learn a thing or two. <laughs> well, I want to start. Um, Ryford, I want to go at the very beginning because you and I both loved this one TV show. And yeah, this yeah. one TV show came on. I watched it. You watched it. I was even on it. Um, mm -hmm. But it was very motivating. What was the name of that show that motivated you? It was the Big Idea show with Danny Deutsch on CNBC. I loved that show. I watched that show. Why was that important to you? Uh, because it really helped me open up my mind and open up my eyes to think outside the box. And it was very, very inspiring seeing successful entrepreneurs, inventors, you know, coming up with their own big idea and turning into a very successful multi-million dollar business. And that really, really, I, I would say spark my interest and in learning more about this thing called invention. <laughs> Okay. Now, beyond that, you've read quite a few books on this too, haven't you? Yes. Now, what other um, book? Uh, there's a book that's one of your favorites. It's one that I didn't write, but it's one of your favorites that's done extremely well. What book is that? Uh, the Fast Lane Millionaire. Got it. Why was that I, book? I'm Marco. Yeah. I'm sorry. Why was that book important to you? The reason why this this book, um, the Fast Lane Millionaire, is important is because it really breaks down. Um, because when it comes to our society, if you look at our society, there's you're you're in a three different categories or lanes. You're in a slow, you're in a side lane, or a slow lane, or the fast lane. When it comes to building wealth or or achieving financial um, freedom, and obviously I'm in the fast lane, and he. You know, the author, MJ DeMarco, who I was able, you know, to um, to meet and actually did uh, a speaking engagement in his um, seminar, uh, really explained, you know, the, the different levels of um, in different categories as, as far as, um, mm -hmm. you know, building um, financial, you know, financial, financial freedom. Okay. Because you're in the fast lane right now, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. So everybody that's listening tonight, um, Ryford has a very, um, I would say, simple, I would say, useful, I would say, needed. How? What else would you say, Ryford, to explain your product? Um, it's a must-have and very convenient and, um, and it's very um, demanding, especially during these tough times. Okay, let's see, go to the next slide, Andrew. Let's see what it is. There you go, this is my baby. <laughs> this is my creation, my invention uh, for the last, 
been, that was what, back in 2008, this is when I first came out with the idea. So it's called Self-Cut System and it's the world's uh, portable, um, highly adjustable three-way mirror for the use of haircuts. Now, now wait a minute, Ryford, you're, you're selling a lot of product and we'll, we'll, maybe we'll touch upon that a little bit later, mm -hmm. but this is a three-way mirror of, of cutting your hair. So you don't have to go to a barber. Is that correct? Yes. Um, you know, my, yeah, that's right. Well, it all started when I think this is when I was 15 years old, I always liked my hair to be well-groomed, clean cut. And uh, one Saturday morning, I ended up waiting, not one, not two, not three, but four hours for a haircut. <laughs> that day literally changed my life because, um, because it actually forced me how to learn how to cut my own hair. And I got so good at cutting my own hair that a lot of my friends asked me to cut their hair. So basically I became a barber. And then years later, um, you know, I watched that show, The Big Idea Show. And that really inspired me to create my my own big idea, and that's how self cut system was born. Okay. So, but it's more than just a mirror, isn't it? Because yeah. that's I mean that's not that unique. What what else comes with it? You have an app, is that correct? Yeah. So we have an educational app that shows you step by step on how to cut your hair like a pro, uh, like a pro. Uh, it teaches you uh, different type of fades. It shows you how to do a quick touch up in the back of your neck, your sideburns. Um, you know, it shows you how to use, um, you know, using scissors and trimming down your hair. Um, so yeah, so we have all, you know, ba basic haircuts and it's very easy to follow. Uh, we actually have a 14 year old kid who actually used our product and did a video and went viral. We had about over 5 million views. So, wow. um, if a kid can do it, anybody can. Anybody can. So <laughs> It's really a system where you don't have to go to the barber, which is a great um, opportunity now, right? Because of the COVID-19, but it allows you to cut your hair like a professional, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, this sounds so simple. Is it that simple? Yes, uh, if you can see, see our primary target audience our customers, our ideal customers, like any um, guys or even women who has short hair, you know, okay. um, you know, has a simple buzz cut and has a nice, you know, a fade on the side and the back and okay. that's our primary target audience. Let's go to slide number three, because you want to talk a little bit about the market here and, and why. And um, so how did you come up with these numbers? Did you find those on the internet? Did you look at the opportunity? Or did you just know it? Was it your gut or did you do some homework on this? Oh, of course we did, you know, like we can't make this up. We have to do our own intensive research, um, you know, online, talking to, you know, people in the industry, uh, in the barbering industry. And um, yeah, so as you can see, men's grooming market is $57.7 billion market. Um, you know, 30 billion represents shaving products, that's um, including um, Clipper products, hair products, um, and we're the only company that has this portable three-way mirror that help um, men's or women's uh, facilitate self-grooming uh, you know, with our, you know, by them using our app. And as you can see, um, if you look at the, at the bottom of the drawings, you see the guy sitting on this little sofa couch. And you see every month, this is, and if we break it down to every month, how much money they save, then every three weeks, every two weeks, and every week. So mm -hmm. for the whole entire year, if I'm, if an average person gets a haircut every week, and that, we're talking about 20 to $30 per haircut, they're, they're, they're saving about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a year okay. on haircuts alone. And, and not only that, but time. The average waiting time for to get a haircut at the barbershop anywhere between 20, it was like at least 20, 30 minutes or, or to an hour. For me, I waited four hours and that was it for me. <laughs> so you can you can cut your own hair anytime you want, look fantastic and save money at the same time. Yes. All right, okay. Let's go to the next slide for a minute because opportunity is big. And we're gonna talk about all the things you're doing from a marketing and and how you're selling tons of this right and left you can't even keep it in stock all right yeah so 
So this is your, I mean, you took this one idea, but you have all these different line extensions. Talk about this for us. Yeah, so, you know, so when I first came out, the original or the legacy product is called the self cost system Black Lambo, which is the one at the bottom left. And from there, we sounded, I think we launched, yeah, we launched 2010 and then 2011, between 2011 and 2012, a lot of people, a lot of customers were asking, hey, you know, we don't have, I don't have enough lighting in my room because it's very important when it comes to cutting your hair that you have enough lighting. So what we did was we actually um, have a, a built-in lights. It's called the self-cut system 2.0 heaven lights. And then from, and then a year later after that, people were complaining, hey, um, you know, I take this product with me when I go away and I take it, you know, and I put it in my travel bag and it breaks. So what we did was, you know, because we listened to our customers, we made it into a travel version. Uh, what's so cool about the self cut system, system 3.0 travel kit is that the mirror is made of acrylic. It's not glass. So it's, um, you know, it's shatter, it's not shatter proof. So, um, and it has a built in hooks to it. And then the one with the 4.0, which is going to be in Walmart, is very similar to the 3.0, but it's smaller. And that's the one that's going to be in Walmart and Walmart stores um, this coming October. Oh, fantastic. Next slide, guys. Yeah, yeah so. Talk about this slide for us. Okay, so this one, um, because this deck is for the buyer, for the Walmart buyer to see, because um, what buy, what retail buyers like to see is that that's your product that did help drive incremental sales, mm. because because you think if you think about it, you know our product it helped facilitate clipper sales, right? So every person that buys when they you know when they buy a mirror they might need a clipper. So they'll so pretty much we're helping them increase, you know, um, you know their product in stores. So th this is an, a good a good example because we're bringing more people into yep. their stores. Absolutely. Let's go to number. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, who are your customers? Ooh, look at those cuts. Uh, <laughs> so going back to what I was explaining earlier, like our primary target audience is guys with short hair if you look at guys with short hair most of them are in the urban space the urban market as you can see uh men with short haircuts between 60 to 16 to 40 years old typically urban caucasian 61 percent are minorities and 30 39 percent are caucasian they're considered to be financially savvy obviously because they want to save time and money um and they're part of the do it yourself movement they like to do you know do things to them themselves and um yeah and they like to pretty much show off their, you know, their haircuts. Yeah. Well, you know, right you, you know what's really, really interesting? I do a little bit of traveling, of course, and I started looking at young men's haircuts. Okay. Yeah. And every time I'd come back from my trip, I'd go, Ryford. Every young man has that type of style. Your product is worldwide. Yes, from, it from, is. from Morocco to Peru. I don't care where I've traveled. It's very, very popular. So you've got a great opportunity here. And I think it's just going to keep on growing. Let's go to the next slide. All right. What yeah, does this so, mean? Yeah. Social influencers. And how did you use these uh, this to sell more product? Okay. So I'm very well known in the barbering industry, in the hair industry. And when I first started, my first advertising strategy or marketing strategy is to look for an influencer and um and over the years i was able to build relationships and be good you know great you know build great relationships with this you know celebrity barbers like rob the original has 1.2 million followers hmm. and then 360 gz he's very big in the waving community which is like for african-american men they have they like their hair to be wavy so he's like the the guy for it and he also cut his own hair and he has 2.5 million subscribers that's insane and um then we got another celebrity bar lowest cut it it has about 1000 you know 190,000 followers and for the barber community here are the pages the barbershop connect as you can see mm -hmm. ranging from 1 million to 22 million followers so this is the reason why we have a very all, strong online presence 
Now, because wait a minute. Wait a minute. Influencers. Andrew, I think we're in the wrong business here, but that's besides <laughs> the point. Um, Reifer, tell me, um, how do you get to these influencers and, and how do you how do you have them talk about your product? Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, one is you could contact them directly. Um, and also they're a big fan of, of my product. So this makes my job a lot, e a lot easier. <laughs> Uh, because think about it, right? If you're a barber, a, I would say 87, 87% of barbers started, started uh, cutting their own hair and that's how they, that's how they became barbers. So it kind of gave them, you know, that uh, the humble beginnings, like when they started cutting hair, they go, it's like they're going back to the origin of barbering. They did it themselves. Okay. So, so that's the reason why I was able to you know, uh, built relationship and, you know, and have, and help me promote my product. Now I want to step back and why, why that's so important. The bulk of your business is online. Is that correct? Yes, it is online. And, um, okay. And so having influencers that are out there talking about it, they can directly point them in your direction, correct? Yes. Yeah. It's perfect marketing for today's world, isn't it? Yeah, and um, and it's so funny because like, with the online, it's I would say, it's, I would say, is it cheaper for Mark? Yes, it is cheaper comparing to a traditional like a TV ads, and this is very effective and, and you know, um, well, very cost effective, yeah. um, because I didn't okay. really break my my bank account. <laughs> you know, having all these influences helped me promote my product. Let's go to number. Let's next slide, please. There you Whatever. go. <laughs> Wait a minute. Celebrities are using your product? Yes. Again, going back to the barbering industry. Every... <laughs> it's the best, the best in industry to get into. <laughs> so, like, with the celebrity barbers, obviously, who they cut? Celebrities. So, um, if you look at Boys to Man, um, I think they bought it. Like, I, I, that was very, that was organic. That was... Um, I remember one day somebody tagged me on Instagram and I was like looking at it. I was like, what is this? And some guy singing. And I was like, no way, it is Boys to Men. And um, yeah, so that cost me $0 in, <laughs> in advertising. Russell Westbrook, again, because of my relationship in the barbering industry, um, I actually um, good friends with, this, uh, with his barber. So I gave him the self-cut system and he was able to use it and take some pictures. Uh, same thing with Kanara Backman, who plays for the Packers. Same thing. Um, Brian Jennings, who actually is a, a professional um, heavyweight uh, champion boxer, um, he actually bought my product. And yeah, he actually reached, reached out to me through social media. You know, again, building a relationship. Uh, he was actually one of my commercial videos. Um, and yeah, they're a huge fan. And also, as you can see, Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. So his celebrity barber, his, her name is Jackie. And um, obviously he's, you know, uh, he's very loyal to her. They're like, they have this like brother and sister relationship. So I gave her one and he does use it from time to time. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't get the picture yet because you know how it is. Um, you're talking about Floyd Mayweather. So he's all about that money. <laughs> so Ryford, it's all about, um building the relationships, seeding your product to the right people, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, that getting in, seeding, getting your product in the right hands of influencers, they might show it on Instagram, they might share it, because your yeah. social media marketing is off the charts, isn't it? Yes, because um, I understand our customers. You know, this is the reason why it was easy for me to market and sell my product because I know my customers, I know my target audience, and I am the target audience. Hmm. So I could, so I speak their own language. So we okay. have this, 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 the same lifestyle. And when they see it, they can relate to it. It's easy for me to communicate to them. So knowing your customers is how important to you? Of course, it's very important because they so, see it, you know, they can relate to it. Okay. Hey Let's guys, before slide. we leave this slide, Veronica has an on-topic question. Veronica says, 
How costly is it for you to work with influencers? I think it's a good question. Yes. Um, well, again, you you got you have you got to start. It all depends on how you approach them, you know, um, and where they got. Because if you're approaching an influencer and they have about five million or ten million, you know, like I shop around. Like I'm not gonna like, you know, go and you know see somebody who I think is my ideal, you know. Influ influencer and they're charging me an arm and a leg. It's not worth it. So for me, like the one I'm showing you, this is all organic. And then um, and then the one that I showed you on the previous page, that was paid, but I was able to negotiate. So you're able to, you gotta know, learn and know how to negotiate when it comes to pricing. And I, I, I and I think I do, I do a great job doing that. Hmm. Okay, good question though. Um, yeah, let's talk about this. Um, what's going on with all this? I mean, it seems like you've got some good press. Is it easy to get press? You have to bang on their doors. They call you. How do you get it? Uh, well, it's a combination of both, you know, um, again, um, for me, I'm very fortunate that to have a, a marketing agency. I, I, when you look at this deck, this is not a one man show. <laughs> I have team in place that help me get uh, to, you know, as far as like, okay, if I need some PR, you know, first of all, this is all non paid for. This is, this is a free PR, very organic. And um, again, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do this myself. So I have a team to help me, you know, they know people. Okay. Well, you know, so you just have to go out there and just, you know, network and to see who, you know, who they know. Yeah. That's it all comes down to work and having a good team behind you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next slide, please. Where are we? Let's see. Yeah. I want to, you yeah, know, sorry. this to me is the most fascinating thing that you've got going here. People use your product and they post it on social media. What's up with that? <laughs> well, okay. So, so the reason why they post it and share it in the social media because when you give yourself a haircut, you're proud of it. It kind of mm -hmm. give you like self accomplishment. I'm like, wow, look at me. Like I'm able to give myself a nice haircut and I want to show it, you know, pretty much just showing it off. Okay. And um, yeah, so I'm, that's why we're very lucky to have uh, amazing customers. Yeah, I, I think um, having customers posting about your product and how much they love it, does it get any better than that? I don't think so. Those are testimonials that are true. They're real. Um, mm -hmm. And how do you okay. leverage? How do you leverage that? Or do you? Um, of course, I, I you know I, I leverage that because um, you know through let's say we, you know we're gonna come, let's say we we decided to do like a paid marketing for Facebook or Instagram, then we already have the content. So we go and ask our our customer, hey, is it okay for us to, re, you know, to use it? Uh, you know, we'll pay them, you know, just, you know, for, you know, for them to do a great work when it comes, you know, when with their video, and then we just put some marketing dollars to it, and um, yeah, and help us uh, increase sales. All right, let's talk about. I, I have a question about QVC because QVC is is kind of typically older women that buy from QVC. <laughs> so can you tell us about? This your product on QVC? Yeah. Yeah. So I think so. I started so back in 2015 because I used to be like what five years now in business, right? I decided, you know what? I have, you know, I I really think that the mirror is bigger. I mean, there's a bigger market in you know in a woman's in a, in a woman's market. So I so I came out with a woman's version called Self Style, beauty at all angles, and when we launched it. We, you know, we did okay, but we wasn't really doing that great because what I learned from that is that I feel like I'm running two different companies because again, it's a whole different audience. So we kind of like died down in like, I think in two years and then we came back up, we did a relaunch. And then that was a time when I was able to meet Tom, uh, thank, thanks to Stephen Key, Tom Cesar for, uh, from QVC, he represented me, my product, and that's how I was able to get on QVC. 
Well, let, let's, let's, let's talk about this a little bit more. And I know, I think we have a video in just a minute. Sure. Um, QVC is a kind of a special animal here. And, and uh, Tom Zar, I'm going to give a shout out to Tom Zar, what a great guy he is. And I think we've done a, I think we've done a um, free webinar with Tom. If you haven't seen it, please look for it. Tom represents everybody from Martha Stewart to Dyson to Ring and uh, Self Cut System from Ryford. So <laughs> I know, um, right? You're 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 in very good company with with um, with Tom, and I think he's he's done a great job. How many times have you been on QVC? Um, well, we just nine, it's not nine. Well, I'd probably say like 12 or 13 errands. Okay. In like less than a year and a half. Let's talk about the first time. Right. Yes, because was everything was going down the road, but something kind of hiccuped. What was it? And how did you keep your cool? <laughs> um, so obviously, um, you know, just to share this with your audience, when it comes to QVC and you go on live, you know, the airing, you there's a thing called, um, you need to hit your, your numbers. So I have about six, seven minutes. So per minute, it's called DPM, dollars per minute. You need to hit, you know, I think it was, it was a prime time. It was a Sunday morning between seven to 11 a.m. And well, I think we had to hit like, I think 11 or 12,000 12, per minute. Wow. And um, so they put us in the green room. And once they were about to go live, the first couple of seconds, um, the camera showed the mirror and it was, and I was like, oh my God, and it looks distorted. <laughs> Thank God nobody picked that up. Um, because mm -hmm. first of all, my mirror is not distorted, but when you do it from, uh, from far away, it may look distorted, but when you go close, when you, um, when you're closer, it's perfect. And, um, I was like, oh my God, what, what is going on? I was like, that was like a good five, 10 seconds. And I was like, oh man, but yeah, I, that was, um, you know, it didn't hurt ourselves. I think we ended up doing $14,000 so we, yeah, right. we hit over the expectations. If they keep on inviting you back, you, you're doing a great job. There's no question yeah, about that, it. But yeah. they, you know, Andrew, your question was spot on. You would think that the audience, how does that audience translate to this product? And I think QVC and Tom came to Reifer and said, look, we, we're going to change the name, reposition it. Is that correct, Reifer? Yeah, so they um, obviously changed the name and I have no problem because you can't say self-cut, self-style mm -hmm. because women style their hair and guys cut their hair. Um, and also what's so cool about the, the woman's version is that we have three different colors. We got black, teal, and pink. Okay. So... You know, you have to, you know, we had, um, last night we had a guest on, on another, another platform, IGA, we had Rick on, and he does a lot of QVC and QVC told him to do something. He did it and it works. So you have to listen to him. Is that right? Right for listen to these guys are they're professionals. Yes. No, you, you know, yeah, you gotta, you gotta listen to them and take notes and, um, you know, and just see where, you know, what they're saying. And uh, because that will help you, you know, along the way. So why don't we go to the next slide? We'll show those different well, colors. Because you want, we got you want me pink. to play the video? Andrew, Let's we have the pink. Video. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and play the video. You can't talk over it. Do you want to set it up, Ryford, or do you want me to just go ahead and play it? Okay. Uh, can you play it? Can you set it up? Uh, okay, I'll send you guys great. a video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I meant is like you can't speak over top of it, so you can comment on it after we play it. So here we go, okay, guys. That's fine. Takes a little bit to get going here and a little bit to come back, but we'll get it done here. I love it because it was started and, and created by a barber, a gentleman, for himself. And then his clients were like, Can I get in on that? Uh -huh. And he was like, Okay, then I need to make one for you know, one for you and one for you and one for you. The guys were loving it if you shave if you do you barber your own hair. Mm -hmm. Um and now the women are loving it too. I'm so excited to bring this to you because we all look in a mirror mm -hmm. every single day. So you may as well look into one that shows you the most information possible, right? Sure. And now with the um self style, you are going to be able to see every single angle with ease. I'm gonna stand right here and hopefully you can see every single angle. So there's no guessing involved. It gives you the confidence to know when you walk out of the door exactly what you're seeing. I love that 
It's shatterproof. That's right. So you're getting a mirror that you don't have to worry about. It's that thin for men and women, for the entire family. If you travel a lot, perfection. And you can even use it just as a vanity mirror like this. So it turns any countertop That's into cool. a makeup mirror. That is easy. Perfect. All right, we're back. They did a great job. Yeah, that was the very first. Yeah, that was the very first show, the very first airing. It was yeah, six seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Go next slide, Andrew. There's that pink one. I never thought I'd see a pink one, but there it is. Yeah. So as you can see, what I said earlier, you got the black, the teal, and the pink, and also comes with an education app. So obviously, I don't know anything about styling hair. So what I did was I actually hired a group, um, a team of hairstylists to actually do uh, self-styling videos. And um, yeah, we're, we have, I think we have over close to, yeah, over 10,000 downloads. Nice. Wow. Right, for what percentage of your sales are the women's version as opposed to the men's version these days? I, I would say... Yeah, I would say 80% is self-cut and 20% is self-style. Oh, okay. God, yeah. I would just think women would really, really dig this product, which it sounds like they do from your success on QVC. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next slide. Distribution. Let's talk about that. Where where can I buy this? All right. Well, you can go to her. On our website, selfcutsystem.com. You could also um, go and buy it on Amazon. Uh, we have a lot of reviews, positive reviews. Um, I believe four out of five stars. Uh, you could also buy our product. We actually got a military contract with AFIS, their Armory Exchange. Uh, we're online and we're also in Zulily. Um, obviously, QVC, Sharper Image. Yeah, like I said, Walmart. Um, you know, this coming October. And then Star Linen is there. That's on hold because of what's been going on uh, with the whole COVID. Uh, they're actually a, a linen company who has a, a, ma a, like, uh, a major distributor for the hotel chains. Um, so, yeah, this is where we are. And also Touch of uh, Modern. And um, yeah, that's, that's oh. where we're at. So, Ryford, Ryford, has the COVID helped you sell more product? Absolutely. We were sold out because it started like, ooh, what, mid, late March? Yeah, yeah we, were, we were sold out like one month later, like a month later. Like our sales, it was Black Friday sales. Like we were getting sales online every minute. I'm not even exaggerating. I was like, what's going on here? Because like the whole entire world shut down. The, all the bar shops are closed. So yeah. people were coming to us and buy our product. And um, yeah, that was a uh, thing to remember. <laughs> that was- uh, how, how, was... how did that affect your supply chain? Because I, you manufacture uh, overseas, correct? Yeah, it didn't really hurt us, no. And I'm going to tell you why. One is, as soon as we're out of stock, we put everything on pre-order. And we're still getting sales. Um, mm -hmm. That was uh, the best. And people are willing to wait from one month to three months. And it, I was very surprised. And they don't care because they know, what, you know what's going on. So um, let's, go to, let's go to the next slide. Let's talk about customer loyalty. How important is that to you? Very important. Um, this is, you know, this helped us with, you know, spreading the word and without costing us a lot of money on marketing or advertising. Um, I think if you see Heather, um, we call her, we call her the self-cut queen. So hmm. one of her self-cut videos went viral. I think we did, she did over like close yeah. to 10 million. 10 million that's, views. That's, a, that's amazing. That was back in 2018. I'm looking at it. See, it's like 3.3. Now it's like two years later. Yeah, it went viral. 
So that helped us tremendously. Let's go to the next slide. Again, this is the customer. Oh, top. oh yeah, we're PVC customer top rated. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it just shows that hey, you know, we're our product is in demand. You, those reviews are important to you, aren't they? Yeah, it's very important. Um, you know, because it helps us, you know, sell more units and and, and plus give our customers and build okay. trust in our brand. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, Ryford. Yeah. We had this conversation today and we're talking about you and your your partner here, Paul. He's a great guy. I've got to meet him too. And yeah, you're you're venturing, right? I mean you're you yes. venture. Why are you working with InventRight? Um, good question. Um well Initially, I was thinking, oh, wow, maybe I could license my product. And um, and then from there, I was like, you know, because I, I, again, because I really believe in education and anything that I can get my hands to, onto as far as helping me grow as a person, as a businessman, as an inventor, I, you know, have, you know, you know, always educating yourself and surrounding yourself with people that knows uh, more than you in, in the Pacific, in, you know, in that certain industry. So, and I, I think we've been working together for the last, what, three years now? Yes, we have. And what's, and what's so great about working with you guys is that you're not, not only providing a valuable information, but not, a lot of people don't, don't um, really, you know, sometimes they forget it. Your resources are priceless. Your connection, your network, is priceless because once a student comes in in your invent right not only they you know not only they're learning the knowledge from you guys but also the relationship they're going to build over you know over time and that's why you know I, I can't thank you enough for connecting me to tom and that's how i got into qvc because of you guys <laughs> yeah well we 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 love <laughs> I'll tell you this, we love working with you. And your formula, I was telling Andrew earlier, you have a secret sauce. You're selling millions of dollars. It's yes. it's um, great product. I mean, it's not like earth shattering, but it's needed, it's smart. It, mm -hmm. it um, is helping people, your, your, your social media, um, campaign is spot on you're everywhere and it's growing by leaps and bands leaps leaps and bounds this could go international correct yeah, we are international <laughs> we, we sell it all over the world um unfortunately during the whole covid we have to limit ourselves as far as like you know okay just keep everything in the u.s because of the whole shipping um issues internationally so since i started the company back in 2010 uh, we've been selling this all over the world especially in europe um, and now we're focusing on just getting a global distribution um, uh, right i mean a few days ago um, i met with uh, i was able to talk to one of the distributors in south america so that's that's huge so one last thing until we'll, we'll open it up for questions how important is the building your team Ryford? You know, it's very, very important. Um, again, I did it myself in the beginning. Then over time, you need to find the people that can help you get to the next um, level. Um, you know, because you, again, like you, you know, when you first started working in your business, um, you're wearing all the hats. And then all of a sudden, when the, you know, when the business started growing, then you have the finance, the funding, to hire more people and and you hire people that you know you're not as far as like a skill set wise that you're lacking um and yeah and i was able to build a i call it my dream team <laughs> and i owe them a lot um because again I, I can't do this by myself very good hey andrew let's see what type of questions we have tonight okay great um Okay, so we, John, Renee, and Evelyn all asked essentially the same question. 
And so John said, why would a barber influence this product? Seems like competition. And that was all they're they're very curious. Like, why would somebody do that? That that's that's a good question. I remember when I first started, um my my it's funny because the first barber battle um is it's a uh it's like a bar like a, it's like an expo event. One of the flyers that I was handing out, it said no more trips to the barber shop. <laughs> and I was giving that oh. to barbers. <laughs> yes. And um so what I did was I made it barber friendly. Hmm. So I had to fix my marketing strategy. Okay. So instead of telling the, 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 you know, the public, Hey, don't go to a barbershop. I made it barber friendly where, Hey, either if you're uh, just an average Joe or a barber hmm. who prefers to cut their own hair or enjoys cutting hair, this, is, this product is for you. And then doing the whole self cut battle, the comp, uh, the comp competitors are all barbers. So when when other barbers see it, oh okay, this is yeah, I cut my own hair too. Um, I, you know, they're more accepting to my product rather than just like, hey, you, you know, you're taking out, you know, you get you're uh, you know um, taking mm -hmm. out our business. Andrew, do we have a video of that by any chance? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Let's go ahead and play yeah. it. I think that would be fun. Here we go. Yeah, this one back in um, 2017, we had about 10,000 people that came to our event and we have about 20 borrowers competing who can give themselves the best of her by using my product and the first price winner gets one thousand uh, dollars right for can you state those numbers again what did you what were the numbers oh ten thousand people that came did to our ten thousand people come to an event that you did yourself oh no no i think myself i'm actually part of the of the categories so uh, i'm actually partnered up with uh, the the vendor the, the the creator of that event the expo. Oh, so okay. So, yeah. Still, in, really in cool. Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. Here we go, guys. What's up, guys? This is Ryan for the stores, the CEO and founder of Self Cut System. We're here at the CT Barber Expo event. Where we're going to host the biggest self cut battle in the world here in Hartford, Connecticut. So come with me and experience the self cut revolution. I just fade away. Fade away. The most difficult thing about cutting my own hair would be seeing the back of my head or holding a mirror and not being able to have both hands free. The self cut system makes it easier for me to cut my own hair because it gives you a 360. It makes you see all around your head, you know, every angle. And I have the full 360 view with it. And you're able to see all of these other angles that you weren't able to see before. I love Back. that video. <laughs> I love that video. Yeah, I, I went all out. Um, you know, I think I'm more excited about the flag than about it than the battle itself. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, I went all out in that event. Yeah. I, um... Andrew, any other questions for them? Yeah, we got a we got a great question from uh, Leela. Leela says, "Marketing your product as a self cut system rather than a mirror seemed to work in your favor. Is that a shift that you made?" Or did you always market it that way? This is a really good question. Okay, so basically she's questioning about this the word system, like the self cut. Did you system. always market it as a as a self cut system or as a mirror? Yeah, I, no, no, I market it as a self cut system um, because mm -hmm. it's it's a system of of everything that you need to to have to learn how to cut your hair. So, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's only mirror, but forgot the educational aspect of it. So we're selling the hardware and the software. The hardware is the mirror and the software is the educational application. Mm -hmm. Next question is from SV. Copyright and patent, very easy to copy, question mark. So they're kind of asking what a bunch of other people are. It's how's the how's the protection on this type of product? Um, yeah, so I filed a number of patents um, and um, 
And yeah, it's protecting me. <laughs> I actually just recently got a patent design of, uh, of one of my products. And, um, you know, cause again, we have, I have like four different versions. So, um, yes, trademark. Oh, speaking about trademark, I actually got a trademark in Canada and Europe for self cut systems. So I'm very happy about that because I only did it for the U S. Mm. Um, and then, um, yeah, so that helped out tremendously. So Ryford, let's talk about that protection for just a minute. It's a combination of trademarks, maybe copyright, but but at the end of the day, it's about good business, isn't it? Yes. Explain that a little bit because everybody's always fearful. I come up with an idea, someone's gonna steal it, of course, if you're very successful, but in reality, isn't it just good business to keep your customers happy and has nothing to do with patents? No, if, if I knew what I knew, like, you know, now comparing to, you know, 12 years ago, um, I, like what you said, when it comes to patent, it's perceived ownership and you could always, you know, they could, you know, people can always go around it mm -hmm. uh, because I personally, you know, had to experience this, but, um, you know, but it, obviously it didn't go through, it didn't hurt me. Um, so the, so basically when it comes to the protection and, you know, like, let's say if you do get the patent. Okay. What's the next step, right? Somebody trying to infringe it. Okay. You gotta go to the court, which means that there's additional costs when it comes to legal fees and all that stuff. So what I recommend to everybody is, is not about not don't really focus on the protection, focus more on execution on mm -hmm. it's all about speed. Like what, like what you said, um, Stephen, Stephen, is how fast can you sell your product? Okay. You know, um, I'll give I'll give one good example. Not only my product, but the ring. He doesn't have a patent on it. <laughs> you know, he just he just sold. He's come for one billion dollars. So, okay. you know, it's all about execution. Thank you for saying that because I know a lot of people that are listening they're just a little fearful and maybe they're watching shark tank. I don't know yeah. what, what they're watching, but mm -hmm. the bottom line is good product. First to market, sell a lot of it and treat yeah. your customers. Um, well, so you're doing all those things. We have another question. Oh, wow. This one's from Alex. What was the hardest part of starting up the factory sourcing cash flow? Question mark. What was oh, the hardest man. Part? <laughs> The hardest part was the manufacturing. So I came out with the idea in 2008. I didn't, my first prototype took me about a year or a year, yeah, for like a good year. Um, I went, I actually went to the Philippines to make one. I couldn't, this is, I don't know anything. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a first timer and I just did the legwork. And um, that, that to me, that was the biggest challenge you know, in the, in the, in my startup stage is manufacturing. And that's the reason why I couldn't order as much units, the first two or three, sometimes four years, because there's always something wrong or an issue with my product. So now I'm very, so I actually went through like nine factories to find the right one and can, you know, meet my standards. How did you how did you raise the money to do all this? How did that work? Uh, I uh, bootstrapped it. I self-funded it. Um, I started when I was 26, 27. I was working as a nurse, and I just saved my money. And um, you know, I took out a loan, but I didn't really, you know, I took out a loan. Just I think I believe it was like fifteen thousand, and I didn't really have to use it. I think that was more like a security blanket, just a cushion, just in case. And um, I, uh, I just kept my day job, you know, um, and that helped me tremendously. Um, you know, I quit in my seventh year in business because I was, you know, I was self-sufficient and um, yeah. And um, well, okay, so, uh, so you were working as a nurse for seven years while running this business before you were able to quit. Is that what you yeah. just said? Yeah. Wow. Dedication. Yeah. So, and that is very important when it comes to cash flow. Like, 
you know, I don't like, I get it. Like, okay, yeah, I'm going to focus, but, but you need cash. Like, why are you going to quit your day job? You got bills to pay. And also I lived below my, my means. Like I was, I was in a budget swag. <laughs> I was like, I was really, really, you know, like I had to, I, I was renting an apartment, two bedrooms. And I was, it's so funny. I was talking to my friend the other day and I saved living, living in that apartment, two bedroom apartment. I saved about $140,000 in like, in like eight years. That's crazy. See, things like that, like, I think that's the reason why, um, you know, I'm able to, you know, grow the company is because of, um, I guess, you know, my financial IQ, I'm able to manage my finances the right way. Hmm. Smart. Because three things, like I tell people all the time, you need, when it comes to business, you need a great product, all right, or service. Two is the ability to sell and market your product or your services, and three, is to really manage your finances. If you, you know those three things, it has to you know it, it plays together. Because you can't just have great sales and you know don't have money in the bank. <laughs> you know, or just no, like you're, no. it just doesn't make right. sense. Right, Fred. You've done all these things. You're doing extremely well. You're traveling quite a bit. You're buying fancy cars. I mean, your <laughs> life has changed, hasn't it? <laughs> Okay, so going back to the fancy car, um, so I'm letting people know I just bought a Lambo, 2015 Lam a Lamborghini Huracan. And um, when it comes to like being financially savvy, that car didn't cost me anything. I financed it. So pretty much I, I bought the car, it's like flipping a house. And you know, so this is a, we call it uh, exotic car hacking, but that's a different topic. But you travel the world, I see you all the, you're just, Traveling everywhere, right? I mean, how how does that work with your day to day operations? How do you, how do you take time off to do the travel? Um, I have to schedule it, and I'm very fortunate that I'm I have a business that I could run remotely. And okay. see, what I love about my business is that I own the business. The business doesn't own me. And this oh. is the reason why people think, oh, when I was a kid, when I was like cutting hair back in the day. People don't, oh, you can have your own barbershop. It's like, why would I? <laughs> I'm going to be stuck here. So those are, there's two different things. That's why I like to live my life. I like to be free, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, this is 10, well, 12 years of work. I started 2008. And I'm able to position my life in a way where, you know, I'm, I'm able to, to, to enjoy a little bit. <laughs> Good for you. Right, for I got a question for you. You, you know, our crowd is a licensing crowd. So, you know, they can keep their day job, don't have to take all these risks, put that risk off onto the company they license to. But can you speak a little bit to what it takes to do what what you've done? I asked this of another speaker, just I think it was last week. Um, he said, is a passion for your product enough? And so can you speak to what it takes to start and run a business and is this is what I asked the other speaker too. Is a passion for your product enough? Um, yes. Um, like it's, 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 it's funny, like, like thinking about my day to day and again, this is like 12 years. Like I, you know, I love what I do. Like people, like, honestly, I just came back from vacation and I tell my friends all the time, I, I don't need a vacation. I just went out there just for the hell of it. Right. I just, you know, because every day is a vacation because I love what I do. So, yes, you need passion. And also you need to, to have some sort of business stance to it. You know, business, you know, you got to be business minded. You can't just, you know, to be a great inventor. Can you hear me? Hold on. You got lost. Can you hear me? Yeah. Are you there? Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, my AirPods. My AirPods. Oh, right. Are Ryford, can you, can you, so you said you love what you do. Can you tell us what you do? What do you need to do to run the business? Can you give us a picture of that? Okay. Well, um, as, as far as, first of all, like when it comes to marketing, like I love everything about my business, you know, um, talking to my customers, getting to know them, um, understanding that like, I just, I'm in a perfect industry because I cut hair, I cut my own hair. And I could relate to it. 
if you ask me if, if I'm starting a business do I don't have passion about like let's say Facebook I have no clue I'm not I'm not a tech guy so this is not the right business for me so people should really do some sort of a, some sort of like a self assessment or awareness as far as like okay what they like to do and to see if you know you know if they have the passion for it because I have a passion wait a minute, for it. Wait a minute. Ryford. How many yeah. hours a day do you work? Uh, to be you want the honest the honest answer? Yes. I would say all the time. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm constantly. What, what, what do you mean all the time? Because I'm constantly thinking. I'm constantly thinking. Thinking is working. Like, okay. you no, know, think about it, right? Like tonight, this after this. I'm gonna go and talk to my factory. I'm gonna talk to talk to my agent. So obviously the whole time difference. So I'm kind of like every night, I don't wanna say I'm like I'm stressed out before I go to sleep, but like there's I'm still working. Like my mind won't stop working, like won't stop thinking. Okay. So but so when you say physically, when you talk about physically a you're, day, you're, I don't know. You're you're hours. on 24 7. Yeah. My mind, yeah. Okay. But I, I would make the argument you're not thinking you're doing. I mean, thinking and dreaming up inventions and scribbling them in inventor's notebook, that's thinking. And you are using your brain with your business, but you're doing a lot too, aren't you? Yeah, I'm doing a lot. Like, you know, creating strategies and like, you know, like a little, like from little things to big things. You know, I, you know, the funny thing is, and I'm going to share this with you guys. Like when people see me on social media, Facebook, whatever, right? They say, oh, right, I forgot the lights. Okay. But man, they don't see like behind closed doors. <laughs> they only, like, they, like, I, make, I, I make it look easy because I designed it that way. But at the same time, okay. you know, I could, it could be really stressful, which I love because it kissed me on my toes. Okay. So, Fair enough. Fair enough. Fascinating. Yeah, and also like, I'm not, I don't wanna say I'm fearless, but like I, I get paranoid in a good way because like, you know, it just, you know, I'm just, I think that's how I'm, I'm, I'm wired. You know, I wanna make sure everything goes smoothly and all, things always happen. So I gotta be ready to, okay, well, if some, you know, if, if something's going wrong, I have to fix it ASAP. But you enjoy that, it sounds like. I enjoy it, yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. Got it. Like Stephen, you you always explain it like you, you're a wolf is always at your door. You're always. Well, I hate to say that, but, <laughs> but yeah, I like the way Reifert says it is a lot more uh, uh, positive. It sounds like scary the way you when you say that sometimes. I, but I just think if you're an entrepreneur, times are always unsettling. Okay, so, and you're just thinking about it, and you're on call, right, mm -hmm. and. And that's because you're a smart entrepreneur. You're on call 24 seven, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Thank I you very much. I do what I do. It just, um, you know, I'm constantly thinking or planning or coordinating. Ryford, your product is doing extremely well. Congratulations. Thank you. And, um, I, I love that the way you're thinking internationally now and you're thinking retail, you're mm -hmm. just, expanding um your product line i mean you're you're um you're smart you're you're a great entrepreneur so thank you very much for coming on tonight oh no thank you for you know for having me share my story and my if you want to call it my wisdoms <laughs> or my knowledge but um you know it's uh, i've learned a lot um you know man 12 years like man time flies <laughs> And, um, Reifert, I want to put Stephen on the on the in the spotlight here. Stephen, so do you use Reifert's product and cut your own hair? Your hair looks pretty good, man. Do you do that? Well, that's a very good question. And he has sent me his product, and I have it proudly displayed in my office. And if you want to see it, watch my last video. But I'm not the high and tight guy. I'm more the wild and wild guy maybe maybe you could do a touch up in the back of your neck you know just like hairs on your, you know, on your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Good job. We're going to invite Ryford. We're going to invite you on again. And next time, Steven's going to be sporting his new do. And it's going to be it's going to be a shortcut. I can't wait. I, I'm up for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you so much, Ryford. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, everybody. Take care. Keep inventing. We'll catch up with you guys next time. Good night. All right. Good, good night, night everybody.